All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. We got a jam-packed MLB slate to jump into on this fine May 10th day. We're going to go through each game. I'll give you my lean or leans on the games, but all my final plays will end up in the pinned comments, so keep an eye on that. Yesterday does not go necessarily according to plan. We go two and four, which you know what? Deserves a womp womp right away. It is more of like a two and three type night because we had the Brewers. We doubled down on them, but used a half unit on each. So it's kind of like one loss unit wise. But nonetheless, let's get this damn thing off the screen before I vomit. We're going to jump back in and bounce back today, guys. Before we do, I want to talk about the ride of the day because the ride of the day does come through for us there. We had King Reformed ride of the day. Yay, uh, Yankees and A's over four and a half in the first Five there that one cashes and what i like is ty no bet also jumped on the ride of the day so guys make sure you're checking out the comments um, and checking out the ride of the days and jump on board with us guys that could be a cool thing if more people jump on what ultimately becomes the final ride of the day if you don't know what the ride of the day is all you do is use hashtag ride of the day in the comments and give me a play in the comments I usually like it to be, you know, player prop or a first five, something that we don't cover in today's video, right? Something like that. And I'm looking for someone to jump on board with, guys. I'm putting my money where your mouth is. Um, if you use hashtag right of the day, give me the play. I'm going to pick one person, jump on board, and then you guys get a shout out, win or loss, in the next video. And we're cashing yesterday's. And we got the crowd noise, guys. Um, if we do cash, we do celebrate. But if not, we do the womp womp, which you just heard from me. But, uh, yeah, play at your own risk, I guess. You know, you don't want to necessarily face the Womp Womp. It is tough coming on here and broadcasting your Womp Womp to thousands of people. But, yeah, guys, go ahead and use that hashtag ride of the day in the comments. Let's jump into today's slate. But go ahead and first hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. We are on the road to 23,000 subscribers. So, so, so close. You guys can smash that like button as well as you have been doing as of late. But the first game on today's slate is going to be the Pirates taking on the Rockies in this one. Pirates, big favorites at home, minus 150. Total sitting at eight and a half runs. Yesterday's game did not go, I, I mean, the way that we lean, but did not go exactly how I had thought. Colorado wins that one. 10 to 1 is plus 150 dogs there. So obviously I liked Colorado on the run line yesterday. 10 to 1. I think that covered their plus one and a half run line. I'm gonna run it back today though in terms of the run line. Plus one and a half for Colorado. Again, I don't really believe in this Pittsburgh team. I've been talking about that for like three straight videos now. That yes, you know, they had a good record. They the wheels fell off for a couple series. That's because they haven't played any good teams. Now I'm not saying Colorado's a good team. I'm not going that far at all, but I do think that, you know, this is a game that can stay close. Uh, Hill on the mound for the Pirates. He's 3-3 with a 4.78 ERA, and then Senzatella on the mound for the Rockies. He's got a 1.8 ERA, 0-1 on the season, but still a low ERA. I wouldn't read all that much into it. I more or less want this to stay close offensively, which leads me to the over here, um, 8.5, which I do think that, you know, we did see uh, Colorado put up 10 runs yesterday. I don't think that this one necessarily goes and uh, ends at a total of 11 again but i do think pittsburgh's bats come alive a little bit more than they have been they scored four runs in their last three games here really not scoring all that many runs all right we got the yankees taking on the athletics here brito on the mound for the yankees six flat era two and three record on the year kyle muller on the mound for the athletics one and two with a 6.6 .6 era we do have a total of nine and a half um which makes a little bit of sense the two games so far in this series have been seven to two one by the yankees and then ten to five also won by the Yankees. I do think that these two teams kind of return back to earth, but still nine and a half runs with those pitchers on the mound does not scare me. So I'm going to slight lean towards the over. And then I think the obvious play here is going to be Yankees on the run line. You're getting minus 110 odds over on DraftKings. Don't love to see the minus 110 there. I think that you could get more even odds, um, or at least I would predict this would be more of an even odds play. But why would it be, I guess? 7-2 to win in game one, 10-5 to in game two of the series. So it makes a little bit of sense. I don't really trust Brito all that much, but nonetheless, we can not trust this athletics team against a team that is competent um, so i'm gonna lean towards the yankees on the run line in terms of a side of this game all right cleveland taking on detroit in game three of the series cleveland gets the win yesterday two to nothing game one detroit actually won that one six to two on the mound for cleveland we have peyton Battenfield. Uh, 0 3 the 4.07 ERA, ERA. Eduardo Rodriguez on the mound, 3 2 with a 1.81 ERA. I kind of want to take a flyer on Detroit on the money line here. This game kind of puzzled me when looking into it this morning. I'll be completely honest and completely transparent. Um, so I'm going to lean towards Detroit on the money line, but this has been a really, really weird series thus 
thus far. I do think, um, obviously, you have the Tigers here. Eduardo Arguez is having a good season, 3-2 with a 1.81 ERA from a numbers perspective, but we know that teams can get to him. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Guardians do. It's just that being said, I do think that there's some value in Detroit money line. So I doubt this becomes a final play. Um, this is probably stick around at a lean, um, but I do like the over in this game as well. Um, seven and a half runs. Yes, we saw a game yesterday in which it was two to nothing, but those are two better pitchers than what we're seeing today. I think that this one actually goes and reaches that eight run mark, much like the first game did there as well. So I'm going to lean towards the over here. All right, Brewers, Dodgers, and what's turning out to be a pretty entertaining series here. We have Milwaukee plus 150 at home on the money line. They're coming off of a 6-2 loss yesterday. They won game one here, 9-3 to three on the mound for the Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw is 5-2 this year, 2.5 ERA, and then Wade Miley on the mound, 3-1 and one with a 2.31 ERA. This is a total at 8 right now. I do wish that we got this at what it opened at, at 8.5, because I would have liked the under, but 8 seems a little bit too low. I know it's only a half of a run but i would have thought that this game ends more um uh, towards like a five to three you know or yeah i guess just an eight run total so i'm still gonna lean towards the under but just know i do think we lost some serious value with that drop of of when it opened up to what we're seeing now in terms of the side of this game i think i'm gonna lean towards the dodgers um they're minus 160 on fanduel that's some juice to be squeezed obviously um but i do think it can be worth it. i think kershaw is gonna face this team pretty well um and i think this la offense in a bounce back um not in a bounce back spot in a moment a momentum building spot, excuse me, um, can look to build on and get to Wade Miley. So I'm going to lean towards the Dodgers on the money line as well as the under. I really liked the under when it was at eight and a half. Now it's at eight. We got to get to seven runs. A little more sketchy, but nonetheless, we are going to still lean in that direction. And I do think this is a pretty good play today. I think that a lot of people are going to be on Milwaukee just because, um, you know, that game one, you know, the money that you could be getting, the value on Milwaukee. I could see that side of things, but I think this is a cleanup game for the Dodgers. All right, we got the um, Diamondbacks taking on the Marlins. I'll stay crazy. I'll get right up, to, right, get right to it. Excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna lean towards the Marlins here on the money line, plus one thirty on the road. They get the win yesterday. Everyone thought I was crazy. Six to two there against Arizona on the mound for them today. Edward Cabrera, he's two and three with a four point seven eight ERA. Kelly on the mound for the Diamondbacks, three and three with a three point two zero ERA. It does not scare me really one bit. I am gonna lean in that direction. And then in terms of a total eight and a half runs, we've seen both games go under here, but they've been damn close five to two and then six to two i think this one actually gets up and over you're gonna get around minus 115 odds over there on um on DraftKings, and i think a lot of the public is on the under which makes sense you've seen two games hit the under in this series uh, miami's had a bunch of games hit the under as of late right but i don't think that you know these two pitchers are really going to hold the offenses down these two offenses yeah though they're not these crazy offenses they are well capable of putting up you know five runs each which would be an easy over so i'm leaning towards the over in this one all right, this next series, so far we've called it correctly. We have Seattle taking on Texas. Um, Texas is big time, is a big time underdog here. Uh, Seattle minus 190 at home. We called Texas money line. That was a final play actually in game one. They win that one two to one. Then we lean towards Seattle yesterday. They win that one five to nothing. On the mound for Seattle today is Luis Castillo, 2 0 with a 2.38 ERA. Dane Dunning on the mound, 2 0 with a 1.42 ERA. I don't know all that much historically about him um but i do still think that there's some value on the texas side of things uh if someone's going to correct me in the comments being like you can't do that you can't go against luis castillo in this situation yeah I, I understand that but i don't think that it's worth taking the mariners at minus 190 when you do have a texas offense that can put up double digit runs you know at the drop of a hat here so if you're more comfortable with texas on the run line minus 130 here plus one and a half sure go for it but i do like the under nonetheless we've seen two low scoring games in this one thus far it is at seven right now which is super low probably is the thing that keeps it from becoming a final play but nonetheless i do lean towards texas on the money line as well as the run line um just where the value is in this game i don't really like the seattle money line call here at minus 190 it's just a little it shouldn't even say a little it's way too much juice to be paying especially in a game in which texas can win this game uh, regardless of who's on the mound Guys, before we get to the Giants and the Washington game, make sure you guys do go ahead and check out Jock Market. Jock Market is a very, very cool app. They have two sort of paths you can take once you get in the app. One is going to be the Price Picks version. If you guys don't know what Price Picks is, it's pretty much a player prop sports book, um, a DFS site legally. 
You can pick players and add them to your slip based on their projection. You can say more or less. The more you get right, the more you get paid, guys. It's really, really cool. If you haven't tried that out or tried out um, any app like that, I highly suggest it. I have a link in the description as well as the pinned comment for 100% of your deposit match, guys. Go sign up right now. I do love that version. But what makes Jock Market really, really cool is they have a player stock market where you can take a month's time span, span or you can have just today's games, right? And you can buy and sell shares of players and compete amongst a bunch of peers and then at the end of the day whoever's um, you know in-game wallet is the largest ends up winning the prizes and everything like that so make sure to check out jock mart is definitely definitely worth it i've been playing on it as of late if you've been watching the instagram reels or the youtube shorts or the tiktoks guys um, which all those are linked as well um, at evpix if you want to check those out that's where i've been doing a lot of my player prop plays over on over on jock market as of late so make sure to go check out out jock market now let's get into this giants and nationals game this is one of our losers from yesterday we have the giants here big time favorites at home minus 150 in this one um on the mound for the giants sean manea 101 with a 7.33 era uh josiah gray on the mound for the nationals two and five with a 3.0 era this total is sitting at nine runs and i do think that that is a little high we've seen two games thus far for these teams washington wins the first one five to one San Francisco wins the second one, four to one. And I don't think that these pitchers obviously um, are anything spectacular. I don't want to say that, especially Manea, um, not having the best of starts to the year. But I do think that that is a little bit high of a total. So immediately I'm going to lean towards the under. This Washington team has not been putting up enough runs overall for me to support that. And then in their last seven games here, the Giants and games that they've played, only two of those have gone over and honestly over is the underdog pick on on sports books as well i think you can get it for even odds over on DraftKings right now so we're aligning with where the books are as well and then in terms of a um in terms of a side of this game it's too much for me to consider the giants on the money line at minus 150 i'm gonna look at washington here either on the plus one and a half on the run line or on the money line but that being said we did go with washington last night kind of like a scorned x over here they did let us down so we'll see if we end up pulling the trigger on that but this is really just a value play for me. I don't think that there's much value at all in the uh, the San Francisco side of things. So kind of process of elimination. we got to find something on Washington if we were to make this final play. But keep an eye on the pink comment to see if it does ultimately end up a final play. All right, Philadelphia taking on Toronto here. Yesterday's game, Phillies win that one 8-4. to four. Um, Obviously, we like Toronto, and I did end up saying, you know what, with this Phillies team, I do think, you know, uh, just has the better the, the better situation, I guess. And on the mound for, they, for them today, Zach Wheeler, 3-2 with a 4.26 ERA. Gosman on the mound for the Blue Jays, 2-3 with a 3.86 ERA. Because of the money here, Toronto's even odds. I think a lot of the public is going to be on Toronto. I do. Just like yesterday as well. But I do think that this is another Phillies spot. I think that obviously they're the better team. And like I said yesterday, that'll only be for the next like year or so. Toronto is going to be the better team. Um, when you look at the guys on this team, I can admit that. But for the time being, I do think that this is a series in which the Phillies look to kind of get right. So I'm going to lean towards the Phillies on the money line yet again. And then in terms of the total, yesterday's game was 8-4. to four. I could see this being a very, very, like, you know, cookie-cutter replica. So I'm going to lean towards the over, just like we did yesterday, um, and take the over 8.5 there. Toronto, obviously, has been involved in a bunch of over games as of late. Eight of their last 10 games have hit the over. And then Philadelphia, you know, only four of their last uh, 10 games when you look at it from that perspective. But those four came in the last six games. So their game's trending towards an over as well. All right, Houston taking on the Angels. What did I tell you guys yesterday? A lot of people are going to be on the Angels because Shohei Otani was on the mound, but he could go out there and have a good game, and Houston can still win, and boom, 3-1 to one was the final score there. Otani went out, and I think he pitched uh, seven innings too, uh, but we're going to run it back again today. I'm going to lean towards Houston, minus 115 here on the money line. Um, they are favored in this game, canning on the mound for the Angels, 2-0 and with a 5.3 ERA, and then Javier on the mound for the Astros, 2-1 and with a 3.3. 5 for ERA. In terms of a total, I'm not going to lie. Nine runs I've seen at nine and a half on some sports books. That's the only information that I'm really uh, feeding into here. We have nine on a lot of sports books. It's nine and a half on some sports books. So I'm going to lean towards the over because some sports books are going and bumping that line up, right? But other than that, I do think that I'm caught on a fence on this total here. I don't think the pitching's going to be what uh, stops these teams or anything like that. But I do think that these offset offenses have both been inconsistent and been able to score, you know, two runs, three runs as of late. So it's a little confusing to me. Um, but I'm going to lean towards the over just because of that line movement. But I really do like Houston on the money line today. 
All right, Baltimore taking on Tampa Bay here. Tampa Bay, obviously, um, you know, one of the better teams and the better team, but they catch that loss yesterday. They lose 4-2 to two against this Baltimore team, and I think that might be affecting a little bit of the odds today as they're only minus 120 on the money line. It also could come down to the pitching. We have Kramer on the mound for the Orioles, 3-1, 5.8 ERA, and then Beaks on the mound for the Rays, 1-2, with a 6.75 ERA. But anytime you can get this Tampa Bay team at minus 120 odds, call me crazy right now, but I think it'd be crazy to not take a shot at Tampa Bay here. Um, and honestly, I don't even hate them on the run line today. I think that they bounce back in a decent way. They haven't lost two back-to-back -back games um, in, I would say, in what, their last four series. So I do think this is a good spot for them. And again, the odds are really good. Usually you're not going to be able to get these Tampa Bay teams around this line. Yesterday, they had the same line out there. They lose. So it goes against what I'm saying. But to be honest, you think they're going to lose two games in a row? Maybe they do. Maybe I get a bug on my face and I got a squish and then the juices run down and I'm like, okay, this is a bad situation, right? Or maybe I look like a genius because I don't think that this Tampa Bay team is a team you bet against more and more and more. And you're looking at a team that has a great offense regardless of who is on the mound. Uh, so I think you're getting some value here on the Tampa Bay side of things. I don't know what that bug reference was, but we're going to keep it going here. In terms of a total, nine and a half runs. Yesterday's game finished at four to two. Game one was three to zero. At some point, both these offenses who have been scoring a decent amount of runs on the season, right, have to jump out and score a bunch of runs. So I think that this could be the game today. You're getting some plus money there on Caesars as well if you do with the, if you go with the over. Um, so I'm going to lean towards the over here for some plus money. All right, Hunter Green of the Reds takes on Verlander of the Mets here. Green is 0-2 with a 3.74 ERA. Verlander 0-1 with a 3.6 ERA. I do think that this is a good spot for the Mets. Obviously, we leaned towards Cincinnati for plus money yesterday. That ends up working out for us. But I do think this Mets team, you know, Verlander didn't look all that great. Uh, I wouldn't say look terrible, right? Uh, but didn't look all that great in his first start. Pitched, uh, what, five innings, let up two earned runs at five strikeouts and that was kind of like a you know get into the motions game for him so I do think that this is going to be a really good sort of tune up game as well um, he's going to start the game off well so I'm going to lean towards the Mets decent value at minus 155 uh, I think this could easily be playing a team like the Reds easily be a you know worse odd situation but the Mets haven't been that consistent overall either so that kind of helps them in this game as well and then in terms of a total nine runs here first game of this series went seven to six. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't again. You don't have an ace on the mound, even though we do have obviously an ex ace on the mound, but I think that there can be some decent runs in this game, especially if you know they get through Verlander and go to the bullpen. All right, next game we still do not have any odds for us. We don't know who's pitching for the Braves. Brian Bayo's on the mound for the Red Sox. Um, I don't necessarily want to give a pick in this game, but the Red Sox have won the last three games that Brian Bayo has started here, so uh, you know, he probably get some plus money there. I think the Braves are a way better team, but I kind of want to see who ends up pitching for the Braves before even making sort of an attempt on this game. Um, yesterday, the Red Sox get beat 9-3. to three. I would look at the over again, kind of regardless of who's on the mound, especially with Bayo on the mound. We know he can kind of explode at any given moment, so I'm going to towards the over um, we don't know what it's set at yesterday was nine and a half um, and Atlanta was huge huge favorites so whatever it comes to today keep an eye on the pin comment to see what we ultimately end up rolling with but I do like the over uh, almost regardless of who is on the mound well, I told you guys at some point St. Louis would get it going. I didn't think it would be in spots where we were betting against them because they've now kind of crushed us a couple times in a row here. We got Chicago taking on St. Louis. St. Louis has won both games in this series. They've actually won three straight games. They won 3-1 in game one, and they won 6-4 in game two. Chicago now minus 115 on the money line here. Uh, Steele on the mound, who's yet to get out lost. 5-0 with a 1.45 ERA. Montgomery on the mound for the Cardinals, 2-4 with a 3.9 ERA. I do think that this is now the time to take the Cubs. They've lost two straight. If I don't, if the Cubs don't pull this on, I don't know what to think. So I'm going to lean towards the Cubs here on the money line. But man, the Cubs have made us plenty of money this year, but they're starting to bleed us dry. So I'm going to lean towards the Cubs. They've dropped three straight games. This has to be a get-right spot for them, or we're looking at a team that kind of could be Regressing. We want to stay ahead of that regression, obviously. We don't want to bet a team into their regression. Uh, we want to kind of get out while we're still ahead. This Cubs team could be taking us in a bad direction, but I cannot lean towards the Cardinals here. They just haven't proved enough to me, even though it's been a few games. I also like the under in this game as well. I think that Steele's going to come out there, and if the Cubs are going to win this game, it's going to be very similar to game one in terms of a total around four to five runs, um, and the Cubs win this one. 
All right, Royals taking on the White Sox is probably either my first or second uh, least favorite spot on the slate for today. Keller on the mound for the Royals, 2-3 and three with a 4.67 ERA. Lance Lynn for the White Sox here, 1-4 and four with a 6.86 ERA. The White Sox did cash for us yesterday, which I'm eternally grateful for. I get it. But I don't really love them today, so I'm going to lean towards the Royals on the money line. But again, this is not really um, a spot in which I like it. I actually didn't even want to uh, you know, put much time into research this game because I don't like it from afar or up close. So I'm going to lean towards uh, the Royals just from the money here, and obviously they can compete with this White Sox team. Uh, they showed it yesterday, 4-2. Uh, ball bounce a couple different ways. They have a different pitcher on the mound. We could be looking at a win there for the Royals. So um, I wouldn't put much confidence behind this pick at all. I'm telling you guys that transparently, but I do think that, you know, this is just a crappy game. Uh, White Sox, obviously, what they lose 12 to 5 game one of the series and they win 4 to 2. Kind of a volatile series as well, which I don't, what I don't hate is going to be the over here. Obviously, if you don't have Cisse on the mound for the White Sox, I'm not going to hate the over at any of these games. Now, obviously, uh, that's funny to say because the game that Cissé did pitch, it was a 12-run game for the Royals. Um, but nonetheless, I do still like the over in this game. Both these teams could put up runs, and they don't necessarily have the defense or the pitching to hold teams down. Next game up, we have Minnesota taking on the Padres here. This Padres team um, coming off of a win yesterday, 6-1 to one against this Minnesota team. They've had some big wins in their last 10 games or so. Still not winning, uh, you know, a crazy amount of games. This Minnesota team may be falling off of these lot. They've lost two. Uh, they lost the last two against Cleveland. Then they lose the last uh, first one here against San Diego. On the mound is Pablo Lopez, 2-2 two two with a 3.7 ERA. And then Lugo on the mound for the Pir uh, Padres here, 3-2 and two with a 3.2. One ERA. This is a tough spot because I think this Minnesota team is a very good team. We've been backing them plenty this season, but the Padres are kind of coming to play and showing that, you know, in these big spots or or decent spots, they're kind of taking some wins. So, um, crazily enough, I'm going to lean towards the Padres here and take them for plus money on the road, on the money line, to get the job done for two nights in a row. Now, it was a 6-1 to one game yesterday, right? And that total was set at nine runs. They've moved it down to eight and a half now. And not that either of these two teams have been in barn burning type situations. In fact, um, five straight games for the Padres have resulted in totals of under eight and a half and four straight for the Twins. I think if things change a little bit today, I'm going to lean towards the over. I think this Padres team, um, you know, kind of goes out there and says, okay, you know what? Let's go off. Let's let's put up six runs again. Minnesota can now say, okay, let's take it upon ourselves to either win this game or keep it close, meaning we're looking at an over there. And guys, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. We'll catch you guys in the next video, all right? Peace out.